the VC project. I don't think it's going to take that long tomorrow, but we'll see. I have to. I'm out. I have a wedding in Kansas City tomorrow night. A prenuptial every, party. Everybody's getting married. You're going to weddings like crazy. Last yeah. wedding of the year. Why are you getting married? I thought you already married. I have multiple. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's fair. Well, now we are recording, so <laughs> and that's, that's okay. How, that's how we start the conversation. So, welcome everybody. Um, yeah, uh, I'm Jeremy. That's Pat, and our good friend here is Sai with VP Marketing. Awesome. So, yeah, Sai, I uh, thank you for coming in. I kind of want to let everybody know what today's episode is going to be about. We're kind of talking about the industry in general, and what some people don't know is um, perhaps how things are purchased, right, and how things are represented by manufacturers, because we have all kinds of technology that we deal with, uh, and we'll get into some of that a little bit later. Uh, but, you know, we're an integrator, so we get a client like, a, a, you know, a Caterpillar or whatever client XYZ, right, who calls us and says, we want to put in this technology in this room, lobby, auditorium, conference space, whatever it is, and we have to provide that solution. Well, I have to get that gear from somewhere, right? So if I'm putting in a flat panel TV from Samsung or a video wall from Media Resource or whoever it might be that I'm, you know, calling, um, sometimes I buy that stuff directly from the manufacturer. Sometimes, I mean, regardless, I'm buying it through like a distributor or directly from the manufacturer, but the manufacturers need to inform guys like myself and Pat of what's the newest technology, what are, uh, what are they showing, what's new, what, you know, sell this stuff, right? And so you get what we call reps that'll come around and uh, meet with companies like us to say, hey, here's our products, here's what we got, here's what's available, and then kind of act as that middleman between us and the client. Am I describing that correctly? I'd say calling us the middleman is not necessarily the well, right I don't way, but like that. We're, we're, we're an arm, we're, we're a sales arm of each of the manufacturers that we represent, whether that's a large manufacturer like Atlas or a, a smaller company like EasyScreen that we represent. They don't always have the relationships and the reach that the rep firms have. So we're, we're acting as a salesperson for them. Yeah, it's hard for them to put boots on the ground for all the different people out there to sell their product, right? And that's kind of where you guys come in because you have your said territory. Correct. And then you're the boots on the ground to come to companies like us. Yep. All right. Okay, cool. So, um, yeah, I mean, tell us a little bit about, uh, tell us a little bit about you. What's your background in, in the AV industry, if you will? So I have been... Uh, working for an independent manufacturer rep for since 2008. Prior to that, I was actually in the high-end residential integration business. Oh, my least favorite. Mine too. So glad I got out of that. Um, but over, over that place that brought me into the rep firm is we were doing lighting and shades and the rep firm I started working for at the time needed somebody to work on the commercial side for lighting and shades. And it was a natural transition there then when somebody left i got a full territory and the territories changed around and yada 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 here i am sitting in front of jeremy and Pat. i got a couple questions here first one when we have guests come on the show I, I do some research i use multiple forms of internet searches i'm going to tell you you have scrubbed the internet clean on any type of Info I could find it's, on you. It's not like when we search Pat and we find the amphibious picture, right? <laughs> like which is all over the web. It's it's you are non-existent, my friend. For a person that came from somewhere besides AV, to me, when you're on the commercial side or the residential side, it's the same thing. You're installing televisions, you're hanging mounts on a wall. Talk a little bit about the difference between residential and commercial because it is two worlds apart. It, it is two worlds apart, and <clears throat> the. The biggest thing is is the dollar, right? And when I say that, it's who's paying the money. So when you are in a consumer world, those folks have so much emotion tied to their money, where in a corporate world, they don't. So if, if something's not 100% working right, that homeowner is typically trying to hold back some of their final payment um, to make sure it's fixed before they, they do that and not have to worry about anybody coming back. It's also interesting, um, a lot of commercial projects, commercial jobs, 
everything ends at five o'clock. When you're in the residential world, you're going home to that equipment. You're living with that equipment. Right. But the, the homeowner, if they have an issue, they'll call you at eight o'clock at night and be like, hey, I got a problem. It needs to be fixed now. I had one time a client call me at 1130 at night, drunk off his butt, <laughs> to tell me his DVD player in his bedroom wasn't working. <laughs> I don't blame him. I mean, Here's the problem here. Well. When at I, least it wasn't an HD DVD player. No, it wasn't. But when his <laughs> secretary told me the reason why they were so upset, I was kind of flabbergasted. They, they could not watch porn that night oh. in, in the room. There it is. Back yeah. Back episodes. Oh, my gosh. You know, I'm like, just use the mirrors on the wall and well, make your own. Welcome to the world of streaming. <laughs> Sorry. And OnlyFans. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, in my, in my experience, residential has been nothing but pain in the butt. And we, we, we now do very limited residential. And when I say that, uh, I mean the owner of our company's house. <laughs> yeah. And, I, yes, I get calls at 10 o'clock. You guys did hang the uh, projector in my golf simulator, too. We, yes, but you don't call me as often. Uh, your uh, wonderful father-in-law calls me regularly, and that's even after he calls you. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, okay, but look at, look at how far back you go into this world, Jeremy. Yeah, I, I know, I know. What are so, you, number 34 in uh, what was that uh, list you were put on? 36? What was it? 35. 35. 35. <laughs> Living, le we're, taking, we're taking tea with a legend here. Uh, we are. <laughs> Unbelievable. Why did you even see that list? You're not even, uh, you're not even on Facebook. Oh, I think I might have sent it to you. Yeah, you sent it to me. <laughs> As soon as I said that, I was like, hey, it's Texas to size. Like, side check this out. Oh, man. Oh, well, Cy and I have been friends for at least 20 years now. You know, something along those lines. Multiple companies we've been at at, at each other uh, that we've worked at. Uh, you know, very close mutual friends, some here, some not, you know, that, that um, Cy and I have always been very close. So it's, it's, it was great to have you come on and, 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 again, hear kind of a little bit about your experience. So what are the questions you have, Pat? For know. me, you have a... A different lens than most people have in the industry. You've you've gotten to see where we've been the last twenty years, mm -hmm. where we've come from the last three to five. What are you most excited about in the next five years that maybe people aren't thinking about yet? Oh boy! So being in this industry is, is really great because I get to see all the technology. But frankly, I I hate technology. <laughs> <laughs> we know by your Facebook presence, right? Or no, lack thereof. Lack thereof. Or, I don't even think you're on LinkedIn, right? I'm on, I'm on LinkedIn. Oh, okay. Uh, right. But and I got a Twitter account that I will not it's give. X. It's called to. X. X. <laughs> Sorry. Got um, burner accounts? Any burner accounts out there ripping on uh, the Blackhawks or anything like that? Nope. No, I don't. Um, that tells me something about you. <laughs> <laughs> but he's got a few burners. Yeah. So I think probably one of the biggest things that I see coming along in the industry is. Uh, direct view LED is probably one of the biggest things I'm excited about because it, the technology is out there to give you a long lasting, large display that you can piece together to whatever size you need. In, in better color picture, better brightness, better contrast, right? And, and for those who don't know, when we talk about direct view LED, we talked about this in a, in a different episode too, but I uh, think the digital billboards on the side of the road just scaled down to being able to go inside of a conference room, right? And I think one thing to be clear about too is, you know, direct view LED has been around for a very long time. Yes. I've, I've put it into places uh, even 10, 15 years ago, right? But I remember doing a job in Manhattan and we were down, it was one Wall Street was the address of this place, right? Unbelievable. And they put in a 32 by nine, so super wide screen, direct view LED screen. It was about $1.5 million. Yep. I think you can buy that now for about eighty thousand dollars if i'm not mistaken I, I don't remember what the numbers were but it's it's a, a very small percentage of what it used to be right a tenth of a tenth of what it used to be right at least so uh you've got this technology and so uh, although that sounds expensive to a lot of people right when you consider the the bell curve of what you know things and how technology progresses that cost is just on the downward spiral right now and i think it's going to completely replace projection in the next couple of years myself I think it'll, in a lot of cases, it probably will replace projection. There's still going to be application for projection, especially if you need to do mapping. Um, that's one thing that's going to be difficult to do with uh, direct view LED, although with the technology that's coming, you are getting flexible LED panels. Yeah, but the mapping is a really cool <clears throat> thing because that's kind of a very niche 
thing to do. Uh, I don't know if you guys rep, you guys rep projection, digital projection. Digital projection yep. That's what I thought. And, and, and they're, they're a key player in this too, right? So mapping is cool because it's actually projecting onto the side of a building and anyone who, I wish I had my computer, I could bring up a YouTube video and show it to you. Right. But think YouTube, the Chicago Blackhawks, uh, intro projection mapping, YouTube, uh, merchandise, Martin Chicago's projection mapping, or even some of these other ones, um, what are some of the, there were some really odd, just search projection mapping in general. I got to get an ad seen. last night on Facebook for a holiday projection mapping. And I'm not talking for your house, not the Grinch on the garage door. Yeah. I'm talking full on animated projection of your whole house for less than $3,000. Okay. So, okay. Let's talk about that crock of BS. Okay. <laughs> Cause you know, that thing's not going to work a hundred percent. I had my so reserves, but it looked it, awesome. It, I see it. The advertise on, advertising on it looks awesome. Like any marketing company, it looks fantastic. But I'm going to tell you straight up, we know technology, right? If you look at the specs on this thing, the projector they're selling is like 200 lumens, right? It's, you could shut all the lights off in here with the windows closed and blacked out, and that would maybe work for you, right? To show a presentation on a screen that's 100 inches, right? It's not going to work projecting onto your house. You'll get something. And most people are going to be like, whoa, that's cool. I love that. But. In reality, Let's if somebody real. wanted to project map on a size of that space, you, you're talking a couple hundred thousand dollars. Right? Well, I mean, millions. Well, for something that big, right. but the size yeah. of a house. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yes, you're talking a lot, right? And okay, yes. Can you do it for cheap? Yes. Is it going to look good and be acceptable to most people? Probably. But when you, YouTube or whatever you're going to do, the Blackhawks thing or some merchant or whatever these building projection mapping is, you're not going to get that for less than $50 million. And that's including content generation, which is half the cost, right? So, right, it, it, and that's huge. Even um, I, I, there used to be one on YouTube for digital projection. Just type, I think, bouncing ball is what it was. Mm -hmm. They did the back of their building, and it was really cool because it had balls bouncing down all over it and bouncing off where, you know, the roof came down to cover the dock door, and then they had an alien ship come down and blow it apart. <laughs> it, it, the content is is key to what you're doing too. So it's not just, <clears throat> do I have the right projector? It's, do I have the right content person too? I, I am flabbergasted when I see the quotes come in for content development. Okay. I mean, we were working with a hotel chain to just do, you walk into, think you walk into a lobby of a hotel. What, what is there to eat in town? What is there to do within walking distance? Press a button. It'll come up with a list. Oh, I want to go there. And then it shows a little map on how to walk there. Okay. Cool stuff. We've all kind of seen it out and about. Uh, for us, the technology is super easy to integrate. It's a computer of some kind with a touch screen and a kiosk, and we're done. For us, it's nothing, right? right. The content quote came back, and I about had a heart attack. I, I thought to myself, I could hire a marketing person for our company, have them create this content in two months for half the cost of this. And I, then I would have them for the rest of the year to do other stuff. Like, what the heck, man? Like, it, it, But I get it. It, it, it. If it's done right, you know what? Maybe it's worth the money. I'll make the same argument. People say the same thing about AV systems, right? They're super. Why is that so expensive? I can buy a flat panel at Walmart for 300 bucks, right? But it, it, so I, I, I understand and appreciate what they're doing. And if it's done right, oh, man, it's good. It is. It is. And, you know, going back to what you said about why is AV so expensive and I can buy this tv for 300 bucks at walmart well, that's a consumer grade yeah piece and it's not designed to stand it's up it's like how many times at a bar do you see you know the video they make their own video wall with multiple screens one image across like mm -hmm. nine tvs everyone's a different color one's cockeyed and crooked and you know or one's been replaced it's a completely different brand with a completely different frame right it's because these things burn up and you know warranties are we can go on and on and on about the difference in commercial and and consumer grade um, but I mean, there's reasons behind, you know, doing what it is we do, but again, if it's done right, it will look good. There, there is a reason why in Vegas again, right. You go to places like this and they got the money from the casinos and they need to spend it on stuff and they buy top tier everything. You walk into a top tier restaurant. I mean, heck there's one that with video walls in Indi outside Indianapolis that you and I went to, yep. right? Instead of these flat screen TVs that are burning out, the, the experience as a consumer going into this place, we talk about experience a lot, is 
awesome. It makes you want to go back there, right? right? The sound system is amazing when they have a band on. The video image quality on the screens is fantastic, right? And I know I'm an AV guy, so I'm going to look for that kind of stuff. But even as a non-AV guy, you're going to come into that. Okay, let me, I'm going to bring this back to you in your previous life, right? Did you notice when you played baseball and you went into a ballpark and the experience in the locker room or even in the stadium was drastically different from one to the next? 100%. And it was tied to the age of the stadium. Who owns the team? You know, if you're in Toronto, it's the nines to everything. You have great facilities everywhere you go. Flip that around when I played in Oakland. If you're playing at the Coliseum, you're pretty much stuck in 1965. We had gotten a scoreboard in 2015. It was the first first time they had a new scoreboard. It was cool what they did. Giant LEDs up in the corners of uh, left field corner, right field corner. So when everybody came in that day, they made it look like it was the old scoreboard still with like the light bulbs burned out because they were able to do that with the LED technology. And then in the second inning or whatever it was, they flashed the new LED. The curtain dropped. It was whatever, unbelievable. Right? Yeah. But your mood is honestly, my day-to-day -day life was affected by that locker room, by that place I was going to work every day. And I, I know they think about that a little and bit. And this is before you were an AV guy, but you without understand doubt. that the experience of the person coming in, right? Mm -hmm. Um, is is drastically different and makes you want to go back to these places, right? Same thing with the stadiums. These people or these owners are building, you know, billion dollar plus stadiums with incredible AV. They may be running a team out there that they're spending minimal money on, but the people are still enjoying the experience because of the LED, the sound and all of the things that come along with it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's pretty cool. So what, what other types of, uh, or what other types of technology are you are you focused on on day to day? On day to day, <clears throat> we're looking at uh, speakers, whether that's your standard in ceiling pendant surface, or some uh, something customized uh, for whatever kind of environment you have. And James loudspeakers. Yep, James is awesome for that customization. And uh, I mean, your kind of go to every day is Atlas, Atlas IED. Um, right? It's a combination. It depends on what the situation is. Okay. This is just I, I need speakers sure and i don't care how they sound or anything like that that's probably atlas yep. if we're looking for a, a good quality speaker then we're looking at sonance sure and sonance has so much on the back end to help you guys out as well with their design help where they run the ease program everything to make that and we'll let your designers be yeah and, and to be other stuff to be fair uh and i know it i'll be fair to, to atlas too because i know john very well that yeah. owns atlas and actually we're probably going to have him on as a guest right so um you know all of these companies make really good quality sounding products right but some of them are just kind of specific to what you need like you've got atlas ied which is pretty much every paging system in every airport in the world Correct. and some conference rooms and then you've got sonance which will do similar high-end residential high-end commercial outdoor you got james which is customization you know so it's kind and, of and the application have, and right. you have the new um fine uh, speaker lineup from atlas too which is going to be even a step above what sonance has to offer sure so you're going to have really three tiers of what you can do yeah i just need paging i don't care about musical quality i just need people to hear it They've got that too. Everybody's yeah. got that, but Atlas is is spectacular with that. As yeah. you said, it's everywhere. Um, on top of that, you're starting to see Atlas in in the classrooms with their IED or with yeah the IED product, not the IED. Yeah, it's IED Atlas IED. Yeah, well, well, uh, they've no, got their it's, the, it's their IP product. Yeah, IP, IPX. IPX stuff. Yeah. So IPX. the IPX is now your you know we all saw an old clock sitting in the room with a speaker below it. Now this is combined digitally where you can. Well, and it's got messaging, and now we're tying that in with mass notification for emergency situations and all that kind of stuff, right? So that there is that technology that's not it's not just speakers, right? Right. right so, exactly, yeah. and that's where Atlas really does excel. excel yeah. Um, through all of that. Yeah, we're also seeing um, control. Mm -hmm. We uh, we currently work with Kramer, uh, who has their Kramer control product. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna ask the the wonderful question from Kramer. And Kramer's got some great products because they do video switching, video scaling, all kinds of stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Has there been any issues or concerns with Kramer in recent months? And I and I ask that because they're an Israeli based company, and I know that we're starting to see or hear about some. Uh, corporations based there having issues and i mean i don't want to get into the whole political war thing but i'm just curious because i know they're they're based over there yeah so they moved out of jerusalem about uh, i want to say about a year year and a half ago okay. and took everything up to tel aviv so we're not seeing right. as much of the issues up there and we have not heard of, of issues for product coming across yeah, with okay. this delays 
Um, I, I reached out for something but, yesterday, two to three weeks. Right, but they've got pretty heavy distribution in the United States set up already as well. Correct. Right. So that's that's fantastic. And two to three weeks these days is nothing. Right. I used to freak out about two to three weeks. Now I'm ecstatic to get something in two to three weeks. Right. So. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we know there are some guys that are still running delays, and it's unfortunate. Um, but it's it's going to be that way for a while. We all see it, and I think it's okay as long as we pre plan for that. As you've worked with integrators like us over the years and mm-hmm. obviously many others, what are kind of the, some of the trends that you've seen uh, as technology progresses to those firms that really rise and continue as opposed to those that fall back? What are the biggest differences? That's that's a really tough question because when you look at how I operate, I find that I get a much better reception from smaller integrators, right? Because what I represent a lot of these larger integrators that have combined with other ones. The million dollar companies, right? Or, or the, I'm sorry, not, I meant billion. The, the, the yeah. billion dollar companies. Those yeah. guys are so focused on what they've been doing that it's hard to get them to change. I mean, we're a small company too, though. And, and I'm, I'm just as guilty of that. You know that more than anybody <laughs> working with me for 20 years, right? See, I see it a little different. I see as you open to being progressive, understanding that if... I'm much more open now, and so I would agree with that. Yes, he's much more okay. open than he used to be, because before it was this. And I still have my blinders on for certain things and certain brands, because I just love what I love. But And, and that's okay, because it but, works. And you've opened my eyes to some really great technologies, which is actually one of our major vendors now that I would have never given the time of day five years ago. Right. So, right. Yeah. right. so you know, I see, again, smaller groups. Uh, smaller integrators, and by that, I mean, granted, I understand Pearl is a huge company, but the, the AV integration group is is smaller. I get better and, and more well-received in those places because I don't have, gosh, I hate, I hate saying that, but, you know, there's a pay-to-play in some of these larger guys. You know, you've got to be giving them tons of back-end money, but they're also doing tons of business with you. And that makes it difficult for somebody new coming into the market and we have to come in and show them a value. I guess the biggest one that I, I can go back to and talk about was Vadia, right? Mm-hmm. Visitech, which was the company I previously worked for, we were like the first or second rep that they brought on board. And who wanted to know anything about another camera? And then, hey, why do I want a camera that runs on cat cable? And now that's what everybody wants, right? So those guys you know, it took a long time to grow into that. So I think in 2010 is when I took over a territory. My monthly goal was like $20,000 in in Indiana and central and southern Illinois. And by the time uh, they were acquired, my monthly goal was something like $350,000 a month. Yeah. Which is it's huge growth. That, that's an example of a company that blew up. Correct. Right. Correct. And, and because they had guys like you hitting the streets <laughs> and, and bringing everybody into it. Right. Yeah. It, it's exactly it because they couldn't hire somebody to go and meet all the people that we knew. I mean, part of what a rep firm has is their relationships. Right. That's the value. In, well, that, right. that's like any company in sales. Pat will speak to that from a sales perspective, right? It's it's all about the relationships, mm-hmm. and it still is all about the relationships. It's not necessarily about the money, right? right? So right. It comes down to trust. It, it, you want to have reliability and trust. Yeah, and, but it, for me as a design engineer, I'm, I have historically kept my blinders on for new manufacturers because I have my manufacturers that I knew would support me and not give me problems. And historically, I had found that when I veered from that, I would then have issues with equipment and then issues getting support for that equipment. So I'm a little bit more open to those things now because I think people in general are open. You know what I mean? I'll try things and we'll do things and I'll have guys like you come in and and if that experience is good for me and it's good for my client, meaning they're not going to have downtime or problems, then I'm all on board. Right. Right. And I think think part of it too, when you talk about the relationship, I, I think I look at being a rep different than some reps do because I want to say, I work for you guys. I work for my clients, even though, you know, Atlas is paying me for, for selling their product. I work for you guys. I work for them because it's not just an Atlas or an Avtech or digital projection. I've got 12, 13, there's guys out there with 30, 40 lines. They have to maintain those relationships for that. So when I come talk to Jeremy and say, Jeremy, you need to check out this product. 
and we go through it. If it doesn't work for Jeremy, that's fine. But if Jeremy says, yeah, we're going to give this a shot, and that first one works out well, okay, we'll give it another shot. Maybe they have some issues. Jeremy's calling me. He's not calling the manufacturer. And then I'm taking it up the chain to make sure. And I eventually might call the manufacturer, but my relationship's with you. Right. Right, yeah. Right. If I can't get it resolved, Jeremy's going to take it to the manufacturer. But I have the same relationship with the manufacturers I work with. I had one where my connection to that company couldn't get anywhere. And I said, give me your boss's phone number and let me hash it out. And two days later, we had them on site. And we can talk about all this new technology and what's coming all we want. But at the end of the day, what I've noticed is what they really want in a conferencing space is something that they know is going to work. That's not going to fail during a big meeting. They it's don't reliable care. and it's repeatable. And it's right. simple. Yes. That's, that's simple, reliable, thing. repeatable. That's yep. it. That's what it comes down to. And right. it seems like it would be an easy thing to do, but it's, it, it's, it becomes challenging, especially with all the different products and things. But, you know, we, we found us, we seem to found a, a good mix of, of things that have worked. Yeah, I agree. But what else you got for Cy? Anything? You've hit it pretty well, I think, right? How, how are we looking on time over there? I, we're looking good. Cy, what, give, give us your insight and, and thoughts on the, on the rep industry in general. Huh? <laughs> you know, I find that the rep industry is, is, has its ups and downs, right? You'll get a group of manufacturers that says, okay, we need reps because our numbers dip. And then in five or six years, when you've grown their business for them, they're like, why am I writing them such a big check? And they're super successful. Why? Right. I, I, I want to recoup we're, that we're gonna We're going to get rid of the reps. Um, so it's, it's a cycle that goes up and down. We've, you know, at, at one point, previous at Visitech, you know, we had AMX and then we lost AMX, but we had Vadio and then we had Cisco and they said, you don't fit in the mix. And then it was, you know, just up and down with all these different things. COVID hurt quite a bit with things because a lot of manufacturers had to go, how do I save money? Okay, we get that, but you also don't pay us unless we sell something. And for the larger manufacturers and those that are established, that's easy. What I'm starting to see is there are a lot of companies saying, I got a great product for the commercial world that nobody's ever heard of, or I want to come from the residential side and move into the commercial side. Those are, I like to call them evangelical lines, because I'm going to be out talking about this stuff for six months, a year, 18 months. Before you even see any return on it. Well, and that's exactly yeah. it. So yeah. I, had, I had one of those manufacturers come to me, and he's a good buddy of mine that I've known for years. And I looked at him, I said, this is great, and your product's good. It's kind of a me too product. I understand you guys want to make this move. It makes sense. But you're going to have to look at paying a stipend for at least a year because we're not going to get the return right away. And, you know, even though you're so well known in the residential world, nobody knows you commercial. They don't care. So we talked about that and he actually liked the idea. He asked me to rep it. And with what we have in the company already. Conflict of interest. Conflict of, yeah. Multiple conflicts happens. of interest. And it happens. Uh, but we still keep in touch and we talk about it. And I know he's brought on a couple different rep firms doing that. And all they have to do is meet certain metrics, right? What are those metrics that we want to do? I need your team, each member of your team to travel with me twice. I need to know that as you're out, you've talked to this person or you're doing these demos, those kind of things. And then once you get to a point where your commissions are surpassing that you know, stipend, you flip a switch. Well, and there's a lot of go. salespeople out there that, you know, work the same way. Right. 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 But, so. but again, the rep firm in a typical contract doesn't get paid unless product is sold. Sure. So we had picked up at Visitech, we had picked up a couple of lines that didn't work, but we were out preaching for them for six months, a year. We're spending time traveling. We're doing lunch and learns, all those things. that are Wining and dining the integrators and doing Correct. all that kind of stuff. So yeah. those are things that cost us that we never got anything back out of. Right. So it's, it's, a, it's a paradigm shift on how to do it. But again, if the metrics are set properly and you start to see the growth, 
and just see what's what's going on. It's rewarding. Yeah, right? It is rewarding. It's why you've been doing it for as long as you've been doing it, which is how long now? I think it's, it's 15 years. At least 15 and, uh, years. Yeah. yeah. I, and I love my job. I, I've got a lot of flexibility, but I'm also talking to a lot of people, meeting new people. Driving like crazy yeah. over multiple states. And yeah, I, yeah. I don't know if that, if I could do that. Right? Okay, but, you know, I've been listening to a lot of podcasts and I've been listening to a lot of audio books. So that helps out. But you can always... You know, I can pick up call the phone and say, "Hey, Jeremy, I'm driving to Peoria. You got a call, or, or I'm driving to Indianapolis. You got a couple minutes so I can chat, throw something past you. And you'll pick up, and if you got the time, you do it. If you don't, you don't. And then I go to the next person. Hey, I'm coming down that way. You want to meet up for lunch, coffee? So, a lot of windshield time, yes. But there's ways to make that work. But it's a great career, right? It. I mean, I know a lot of reps, and they all love what they do. Mm -hmm. You know, and sometimes things change, and people shift around like anything. But people love what they do. They tend to stick in the same industry, right? So. Listen, yeah. Listening to you talk, I, I had another question. <clears throat> when it comes to brands approaching you, what are the biggest factors for you when you decide whether or not, yeah, that's going to be a brand for you to rep or not? We have to look at, you know, is there some existing revenue? Is one one thing that we really try to look at. Second thing is, is are they going to give it to us? in our full territory. So the 13 states. Now we'll break that up. We'll break it up at the at the river, you know, because we're both on east and west Mississippi. But then we have to look and see is it a conflict of interest to one of the other lines we have. Now it may be, but we may look at evaluating that and say, this hasn't been super successful for us. Although they're great people, this seems to have more potential. Drop them, pick up them. Or at the same time though, you got to remember that <clears throat> A lot of our manufacturers are doing multiple things. They're not just selling speakers. They're selling video switchers and control systems and speak, you know. So it might just be a conflict on one of the lines, but not the majority of the line, right? No, and that's when, well, typically you're going to see it more when it's a majority of the line. Um, years ago, we had a manufacturer come to us and say, we want you to rep us. And they had a wide breadth of products in there. One of our longtime existing uh, manufacturers said, we're probably going to have to fire you because we both have one item that's the same. Yeah. And that's, and, that's ridiculous. And yeah. that's, that's where the manufacturer has to trust us. Right. You know, because let's look at video over IP. Everybody has video over IP. I've got at least three on my line card that all have video over IP. They need to trust me that when I'm talking to you guys about it and I learn about the project, I'm going to recommend the right one. You know, RGB Spectrum is an amazing product. It's typically in your uh, Knox. Command rooms, command control rooms. rooms control yep. rooms. And if somebody's doing video over IP for that, well, I'm definitely specking RGB. I'm not going to say contemporary research. Contemporary research has some great video over IP, but it doesn't meet the needs there. A lot of distribution on their end versus command and control, right? Correct. So, again, they have different applications, right? right? And they have to trust us yeah. to make the right decision. So when you look at the LED lineup, you know, we have a couple in our lineup and that they all trust us to make the right decision. We have a premium. We have a, a more of a mid-tier entry level. So where do we go? Maybe, you know, one, one fits that. It's like with us, with some of our yeah, clients. We approach it the same we, way. We approach it the same way. We, we get them in at the entry level and then we start shifting them to the premium, right? Expose them to the new technology and just see where that goes, right? So. And that's that's your job, right? It's expose them to the technology, let them make an informed decision, and then take care of it like you would any other client. Make sure it works for them. 100%. So, okay, that's it. That's all we got for today. Unless you had anything else, Pat, you wanted oh, to touch on? Of fun. So, I, man, thanks for coming in hey, not and talking problem. to us. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody. See you next week. Cool.